Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. It is a gloomy, gloomy Friday afternoon and I have been working on my laptop most of the morning and I thought it would be a good idea to share with you some of the customizations I have on my MacBook that have helped me truly personalize it to make it my own, to make it work for me and I'm sure with everyone being at home right now, you could use a little bit of distraction and this could be a good way to help yourself organize and customize your own laptop. So that's what is happening in today's video. If you wanna see more, stick around. The first customization that I'm gonna share with you is a source for desktop backgrounds. I think everyone knows how to change their desktop background. I have found that the everygirl.com has a nice variety of desktop backgrounds and they actually produce new ones every single month. So you can check them out at like the first day of each month and then they're on their website archived. Um, so in order to do that, it's pretty simple. You just type into a search bar every girl tech backgrounds and click on the archives and they have a ton of tech backgrounds i really like how some of them are like monthly to-do lists some of them are quotes most of them, or a lot of them, have the month's name and then a small calendar of the month. Just really sharp, feminine font. Totally my vibe. And I'll click on April, which is the latest month. They're totally free, and there's a nice variety. when you find one that you like what you can do is click the link and then you just save this image to anywhere I save mine to my downloads and you navigate to system preferences and then to desktop and screensaver. Once you're in there, you click, make sure you're clicked into desktop, make sure you're in the right folder. I saved my image on download, so here is the image that I currently have. And then I downloaded another one from the Every Girl. So all you have to do is click on the image that you want and it will change your background and I am just super smitten with these backgrounds that the Every Girl produces and publishes for free every month. Now the second customization that I'm going to highlight today is Hot Corners, which is a feature that's built into my MacBook Air. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to navigate to System Preferences and in the search bar here, I'm going to type in hot and hot corners will pop up. It's within the desktop and screensaver button. And I'm going to navigate down to hot corners and click. Essentially, what hot corners are, they are actions that can be taken in a very quick you know, moments notice. So if you navigate to these corners and you have a hot corner feature enabled, this is what is going to happen. I only have two hot corners enabled. The top right corner of my screen, if I go there with my mouse, it is going to put my display to sleep. This could be helpful if you have to run out in a hurry and you want to ensure that your MacBook is secure and secondly the bottom right corner 
I have a hot corner of starting my screensaver. The other options that exist are you see start screensaver, disable screensaver, mission control, application windows, and so on and so forth. Just a quick action that can be taken that helps you minimize the amount of clicks you have to do to get that going. And I'm going to navigate now to my bottom right hot corner and you can see it populates my screensaver, which I'm going to talk about next. So isn't this cool? I love this. This is my third customization. I love, love personalizing my screensaver. I had a clock on there for the longest time and it there was nothing special about it. But now I just love seeing my screensaver on my MacBook. And this also is a built-in feature. Let's see how to do this. In order to get the moving tile screensaver, you simply navigate again to System Preferences and click on Desktop and Screensaver. And make sure that you are in the Screensaver section. And there are a variety of options for what your screensaver can look like. You need to choose shifting tiles in order to have my screensaver and what that looks like. So make sure that you click shifting tiles and then you need to ensure that you have images saved in one single place. So. I created a folder that's called screensaver images and come to source and click drop down and there are some default collections of colors and landscapes and flowers that you could use. Let's see what this looks like. I don't really like those. I would pick some of my favorite photos, maybe from Pinterest or my personal photos. Unsplash also has some great photos. So click choose folder and wherever your folder is that you saved your favorite images, click on that folder and then choose it. Click choose. And once you do that, Try your screensaver out and it may take a moment to populate but you will now see your favorite images or a variety of the images that you have in your folder as your screensaver. The fourth customization that I have on my MacBook is right here on my desktop. You can see the file folder icons have changed or have been changed from the classic blue folder where that's what I had the classic blue folders and the icons are now different colors and different icons and this is such a fun easy way to personalize your desktop and make it you know, show your personality a little bit. In order to do that, you need to have some kind of PNG image saved on your computer. And I chose icons that had transparent backgrounds, so no white backgrounds show up for my desktop icons. Now, in order to do this, it's pretty simple. I'm going to make a new folder to demonstrate. So here's that classic blue folder. I'm just gonna name it new. And I want it to 
blend in, be complementary with my other folders. So I have some icons saved and I have them saved in my documents. You can see desktop icons. So I have these four images saved and for this folder I am going to open this image and what I'm going to do with this image is I'm going to press command A so everything is selected in that image command C to copy it and then I'm going to click on the folder select get info and what you need to do is click on this icon make sure it's selected you can see that shadow there and it's pretty simple all you have to do is press command V and the icon changes so now I have another folder on my desktop that blends right in with the aesthetic of my other folders. My fifth and final customization that I'm going to highlight today is actually housed in Google Chrome and they are the Google Chrome extensions. I'm not gonna tell you about every single extension that I use but I'm gonna highlight a few that I think will be incredibly helpful. So the first extension is actually viewable right now. This is the screen that pops up whenever I open a new tab. So I don't see the traditional Google search page, which Google is my homepage. I really like Momentum is the extension. It's free and you can still search via Google right here, but that is not the center stage of the web page. Whenever you open a new tab, you see a really nice looking image. It will say good morning, afternoon, or evening with your name here, has the time in large text. You can also add in your main focus for the day. It has a quote every day that changes. It also has the temperature for your city. And again, you can still search Google from the top left. It's just a much nicer interface and user experience than Google's search page. The second extension I'm going to highlight is called Session Buddy. Session Buddy is also free and what Session Buddy does is it allows you to save your current session of tabs, whether it is one window full of tabs or multiple windows full of tabs, you can save them all. And to do that, you just simply click save and then name it something very specific so you know what session you're going to be going back to whenever you use Session Buddy. So maybe you have school tabs that you're constantly using over and over again day after day you could name this like school tabs and press ok maybe you are doing a ton of event planning for example you could name it you know the name of your event and event planning and this just saves a ton of time if you are constantly going to very very similar tabs for me i could save this and say that you know this is my youtube planning tabs and i could come up to session buddy at the start of the window and click on my youtube planning tabs and boom all of the tabs that i need are already going to be populating the third extension that i want to highlight is grammarly 
Grammarly is a free extension that provides spelling checks, grammar help, it provides writing suggestions, it also has some features that tell you what kind of tone the text is, whether it's positive, negative, hopeful, etc. And I've been using the free version of Grammarly since March 2016, so for four years. And you can use Grammarly not only in Google Chrome, but you can use it in documents, you can use it in email. It's pretty versatile in terms of compatibility, and I highly recommend you check Grammarly out. If you are a color person and use color to create graphics or for branding or for any reason, Colorzilla is a free extension that allows you to pick colors from web pages. Let's say I really like this background color of this quote. I can come up here to Colorzilla, click on it, click the first option, pick color from page, and then my mouse will turn into a plus sign and it is sampling, wherever that plus sign is, it's sampling the color. So if I find the color I like, I'm just gonna click and that color will be copied to the clipboard. So then I navigate back to Colorzilla, click on it, and I click the second option, which is Color Picker, and I can now see the hex code for that color if I wanna use it for whatever purpose. Similarly, if I am interested in knowing what kind of font is being used on a site, there's another extension for that. I'm gonna be every girl. I love the design of their website and really enjoy the font pairings that they have. The extension I use to check out fonts is called What Font, and it's also free. All you have to do is click the extension and then you're entered into the What Font extension. And all you need to do is navigate over text and it will tell you the name of that font which again if you're into branding creating graphics and get inspired by seeing fonts on your favorite websites this could be a good extension to have and to quit it all you have to do is just click exit what font and you're done that's it those are my customizations that i use to personalize my macbook and now that i'm done screen recording my macbook it is bright and sunny outside and timber weather is just totally unpredictable <laughs> let me know if you decide to personalize your own computer and i'll see you next time